Ready? Awesome. All right, everybody. Hello. I'm Prashant. Uh, I'm a developer advocate with Facebook. Uh, and thank you very much for coming. In this session, we're going to talk about building social games using uh, the Facebook SDKs. Uh, but before I, get, I begin, I want to tell a little story. Uh, so Bear, who spoke uh, immediately prior to me on this stage about Android, uh, sits about 10 feet away from me in Menlo Park. She literally sits right there. Uh, and so one day, uh, she was sitting at her desk, and she uh, was playing around on her iPhone and looking through her news feed, and she saw a mobile app install ad uh, for a game. And this is a game where uh, you build your own sorority. And I don't know if you're familiar with sororities. You've more than likely seen uh, American films where you are. But the basic gist of this game is that you have a sorority, and you've got a house, and you need to go buy furniture and throw parties and recruit people to join your sorority. It's a remarkably stupid game, but uh, as Bear was playing it, she couldn't stop giggling, she couldn't stop laughing at the game. And you know, so I quickly forgot about this a few days later when she Facebook messaged me on a Sunday afternoon, I think, and she said, you're not gonna believe it, but I've spent $40 in this game already. I'm like, what have you spent $40 on? She said, well, she's throwing wine parties, and she's throwing yoga parties, and she's throwing various socials to recruit people into her game. <laughs> to replace her real life, she says. But she's playing this game, and she is uh, having a great deal of fun inside this game, and she Facebook messages me. And so, of course, my interest at that point is, hmm, I should go check this game out too. So what do I do? I went to the App Store, I downloaded the game, and I started playing with it as well. And before I knew it, I spent $30 in this game. And so the game, again, is incredibly silly, uh, incredibly stupid. I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but it is a great example of social networking and how games can benefit from uh, social functionality. Now, in this game, both Bear and I showed up to work on Monday, and you know, we didn't start, we didn't finish talking about the game. We never mentioned it again until we started doing these uh, talks in New York. And the thing is, though, that this game had no support at all for social features, at all. And so what started at very promising as a mobile app install ad, which they surely paid money for, got Bear to download it, word of mouth, literally word of mouth, right 10 feet apart from one another, she convinced me to download the game. That one mobile app install ad ended at two users, both of whom no longer play the game. It's no longer interesting or engaging for us. Now, had this game supported social features, things may have been very different. As Bear was playing the game, she could have shared stories from the game of parties she had thrown, people she'd recruited, friends she was playing with. Her friends could have seen this game in action on her timeline in, in the newsfeed. And they could have then decided, I'm gonna play that game too. And when they played it, they would have resulted in stories as well. And you can see the viral growth going from there. Same thing with me, as I'm playing this game and I'm making fun of myself playing this game, the end result could have been more of my friends thinking, that's a really stupid game that Prashant's playing, I'm gonna try that too, which is pretty common. And so when we think about social games and think about driving distribution and driving discovery, that's what we're all here to learn. We're here because we've got great games that we wanna build or great games that we have built, and we're looking for ways to capture uh, the, the notion that everybody's on Facebook all the time and being able to get in front of them to grow the game. So just think about how this one game with one mobile app install ad got two users with no social features. And had they implemented a lot of the features I'm gonna talk about, that one mobile app install ad could have resulted in 20, 30, 40 users or more. And so that's sort of the critical thing that we're gonna to learn today. Now games, uh, it turns out, are pretty popular on devices. Uh, Flurry recently did a survey where they looked at how people were using devices. And it turns out, you know, of course, 50% of the time people are using a browser, they are playing various utility, using various utilities uh, on their device and so forth. But 32% of the time that they spend inside their device uh, is spent playing games. Uh, which is pretty astronomical, but it's also not unrealistic. We see it all the time. You know, if you're in a movie theater, you see people playing, you know, a quick game of words with friends. Uh, if they're in uh, a line uh, at a grocery store, they're going to grab a quick game of Candy Crush or Diamond Dash or what have you. Any number of these casual games where people can play for five, six minutes at a time and then move on. And so it's not surprising that people spend a lot of time inside their games. So what's the last 18% of time? Well, of course, that's Facebook, which is also not surprising. So 50% of time that people spend on devices are spent very productively in both Facebook and in games. Uh, and we want to capture that. When we build a game, we want to capture that attention. We want to capture those users, capture that audience to get them to come to our game. 
Games are also pretty popular, we know that. Of the top 400 grossing iOS apps, 72% of them are games. On Android, it's 78%. And so, uh, and every day, uh, on a given month, every single day, 143 new apps or, sh or new games are showing up in the App Store. So we know people play a lot of games, and Facebook. We know people play a lot of games, but we also know it's really hard to break through 143 new games uh, a day, very hard to break through all the 78% of iOS apps are games, and 72% of iOS apps, iOS apps, 78% of Android apps. It's hard to break through. But your secret, your golden ticket to breaking through is Facebook. 1.1 billion people a month use Facebook. 751 million of them use it from a mobile device. 250 million and more, uh, we know it's a lot more, we just haven't quantified it yet, uh, are gamers. And so your ticket is to get through in Facebook. And Facebook provides some really unique social channels that help you break through all that noise, that help you take that mobile app install ad that drove that one initial download into organic growth and distribution uh, among people and their friends. So these social channels enable a lot of really cool features and a lot of really cool scenarios inside of apps. Using Facebook requests, for example, uh, you can do invites. So you can enable a person to invite their friend to join them in a game. You can enable a person to send a gift or a life or an avatar or, or a kudo or whatever is appropriate for your game to one of their friends. The feature that I love the most that stokes my competitive nature constantly is leaderboards uh, and uh, tournaments. You know, I think about leaderboards and tournaments for everything. I think about uh, apps that I write that, are, that aren't even games. And I think about how can we put a leaderboard in there that encourages people to get higher on that leaderboard, to, that forces people to think, I need to be number one. It's an innate human characteristic. When you show a leaderboard to someone and you show them where they stand, they immediately want to crawl up the rankings. Everybody wants to do it. And so social leaderboards and tournaments, not only applicable to games, they're applicable to almost any app that you want to build, any lifestyle app uh, or any game that you want to build. Uh, and then bragging and challenges. So if I do something cool in my app, or if I want to challenge a friend to do something cool with me uh, or against me, uh, these are great features that you can enable uh, using these Facebook social channels. So let's just cover some of these really briefly, and then we'll dive into examples uh, of how to actually do them. Invites are probably the, the most straightforward one that we can all kind of get our heads around. Someone's playing a game, and they're, they say, well, you know what? I really want to play this game uh, with one of my friends. Uh, you know, I love to play words with friends against my friend Juan uh, because Juan's terrible at it and I can increase my scores and take screenshots of my bingos, right? So, you know, you can play against a friend, you can invite friends, uh, and we'll, I'll show you in just a moment how to build a custom friend selector uh, inside your app. And you can invite your friends uh, to join you in the game, and then you can see a preview of the message that's being sent to them. And so you can see here uh, that Simon is inviting Vlad to join him in a game. You can also send gifts, which are basically invitations with something of value attached to them. Uh, and so you can see here that I'm uh, playing this uh, particular game, uh, and I'm going to send a gift uh, to a couple of my friends. And you can see the resulting uh, uh, request dialog, uh, which then gets sent to the user. We'll actually take a look at that uh, again real quick. You can see here I'm playing this game. I'm going to uh, send uh, a life, a new life, uh, to a couple of my friends, uh, Christine and Christian. Uh, the resulting uh, FB request dialog box pops up. I can see it's pre-populated with the information. The user can then go ahead and accept uh, that request or accept sending that request, which then gets sent to the user. On their end, what they see is pretty cool. They see a notification from their Facebook app. So why is that important? Why not uh, use push notifications or something like that? Well, this is cross-platform. You know, Simon talked about earlier how people have multiple devices. Uh, they may be playing on the desktop, uh, or they may have both an Android phone and an iPad, or any combination or any permutation of, the, of those things. Uh, and so people have different platforms, uh, and their friends may be on different platforms than them. So when you build your game, when you build your app, you're trying to support as many platforms as possible. As James referred to it, it's non-negotiable now to be cross-platform. And so as you support these multiple platforms, you want to have a unified notification system. And one way to build that unified notification system is by using Facebook and Facebook requests. And so users will get a Facebook request via the Facebook app, which they can then interact with, 
because we support deep linking, it's something both Simon talked about as well as I talked about uh, just a moment ago in my previous session and we'll cover here as well, we're able to take that request and take the user directly to your app and to a pertinent location inside your app. They can then redeem uh, that particular request. So it's great because it's cross-platform, uh, and it also works with people who haven't installed your app. Uh, so people who uh, are just getting a notification via Facebook from one of their friends uh, because they got a life in Candy Crush or they got a, a kudo in another game, when they interact with that notification, instead of being sent to the game because they haven't installed it yet, they're instead sent to the App Store where they can then download the game. It's a great way of driving distribution, enabling a user to invite their friends to the game whether they've played the game or not. Social leaderboards, again, this is my absolute favorite feature. Every single time I see a leaderboard in a game, I end up playing the game over and over again to see how far I can get. And it works in things like Foursquare. I mean, Foursquare was notorious for this, where as I used Foursquare, I wanted to be the mayor of everything. Uh, and you just kind of constantly move up the leaderboard. Uh, and this really does stoke that competitive fire in everybody. But along with leaderboards, you can also build weekly tournaments. Uh, so this is, uh, I look at tournaments as sort of a, a poor man's leaderboard in a sort of a way. If you've got a leaderboard and there's someone who's at the very top, that may look daunting uh, to a new user and a new player. Whereas a tournament, if you're running a daily tournament or a weekly tournament or whatever, the new user knows that they'll have a chance to get to the top of the leaderboard at some point if they keep playing your game. So the combination of leaderboards and then weekly tournaments uh, enable you to stoke that competitive fire that everyone has and encourage them to reuse your game. Again, this is my absolute favorite feature. Even if you're not a game developer in this room uh, and you're thinking about building a lifestyle app, think about ways to incorporate uh, leaderboards and sort of gamify your apps as well. Uh, bragging is my favorite thing to do in general, uh, but in games it's also pretty cool. Uh, in bragging, I've done something really awesome inside the game and I want to share it with all my friends. So if I beat someone that's particularly difficult to beat, uh, I've got a friend, uh, John, who's incredible at Words with Friends. Whenever I beat John in Words with Friends, I immediately want to share it with everybody. Uh, and so uh, when you've done something uh, incredible inside of a game, something that actually you're proud of, uh, the natural instinct is to share that with your friends on Facebook uh, and you want to support that because the end result of that is another story that shows up in newsfeed and another opportunity to get in front of people and another opportunity for them to convert and become a user of yours. And you can see here using the native share sheet to do that. So the first step in implementing all this stuff is starting with Facebook login. I talked about this briefly a second ago. F uh, Facebook login is your gateway to awesome stuff. It's your gateway to getting information about a user's identity, getting information about their friends, uh, appearing in search uh, if you're a game, uh, and getting distribution via open graph. Uh, and so once you've uh, implemented Facebook login, you want to make it prominent inside your app. And most importantly, you want to explain what you're going to do uh, with, the, uh, with the login information. Don't just put up a login dialog box and ask for a bunch of permissions. Prompt the user. Give them an understanding of what you're going to do with their data. Uh, this is pretty critical. I think a lot of apps uh, don't do this very well. Uh, and this is pretty important to getting that conversion into an authentication uh, inside your app because the end result of that is now you can start using all of these social channels that we're going to talk about. Uh, you're required to ask for read permissions and write permissions separately, but asking for read permissions first uh, is pretty straightforward and pretty important. Uh, and then uh, making sure that you ask for write permissions in context. Uh, when you want to write to someone's timeline, that's the time to ask them for permission to write. Uh, don't ask up front at the beginning uh, when they start using your app. And then something that, you know, uh, is... Uh, pretty awesome on iOS, doesn't really work that well on Android, you can do it, uh, is supporting both free and paid versions of your app. And so inside uh, your Facebook app configuration, uh, when you go to developers.facebook.com, you can specify that your app is a native iOS app. And you can see here that I've got uh, you know, a dialog box that says, that defines our friend smash sample. And in here, there is a uh, field called the URL scheme suffix. And inside here, I can specify that I want to have different versions of my app. In this case, I want to have a free version and a paid version of my app. It's just a string that I'm appending to uh, the URL scheme. And this enables me to use the same app ID uh, with my app, whether I've got a free version or a paid version. 
Uh, and why is that important? Well, if I'm a user uh, and I'm using the free version of an app, maybe I've run out of levels uh, inside the game and I want to keep playing uh, and I want to upgrade, well, I want to bring all my information with me. I want to bring my stats with me. I want to bring where I am on the leaderboard. I want to bring all that data with me. You, as an app developer, want to upsell them to a paid version. Give them a taste of your app with a free version and upsell them to a paid version. This is a great way for you to support both halves of that equation, what you want, free and paid version, and what the user wants, which is, I want to bring my information with me uh, as I progress through the game. And so I'm going to supply uh, a paid and a free uh, suffix in this particular instance. Inside my Xcode file, uh, inside the plist file, uh, inside my Xcode project, I should say, uh, I would then specify in the URL schemes, which is one of the fields that you enter inside when you configure your application uh, in Xcode, I'm going to supply that suffix. So in this instance, this is the Xcode project for the free game. So you can see I've supplied various suffixes on the app configuration, and then in the various Xcode projects associated with those versions of my app, I'm then going to supply that suffix inside the Xcode project itself. And then when you authenticate your application, you create your session uh, with your application, you supply the URL seems suffix inside uh, the call uh, to initiate the session. OK. So now we've got login working. So let's uh, start implementing a lot of these social channels. So it begins with requests. Uh, and requests enable us to uh, get existing users to recruit new users. So the basic flow is a user gets a request uh, from one of their friends a potential user, I should say, gets a request from one of their friends. If they have the app installed, so they're already a player in your game, we take them directly to the, to the game itself and to a pertinent location inside the game. If they don't have the game installed, we take them to the App Store, where they're now presented with the opportunity to install this game. So you can see that as uh, an existing user of the game, I can send a request to one of my friends, one of my friends then sees this workflow. If they're also already playing the game, they're taken to the game itself. If they're not already playing the game, they're taken to the App Store to download it. So now I've recruited one of my friends to join me. If we go back to the example of Bear and I, this is how Bear would have recruited me to join her game. So let's take a look at the user flow uh, for requests in general. Uh, the first thing we do is inside the game, I'm going to send a request to one of my friends to have them join me uh, inside the game. I see a preview of that request, and then when I send it, the user on the other end receives a push notification via the Facebook app. So this isn't Apple push notifications or anything in Google Play or anything in Android. This is using the Facebook app that's probably already installed on a user's device. So they receive a push notification via the Facebook app, and when they engage with that notification, they will uh, see uh, that uh, notification inside uh, the notification tray in their app. So it lights up the notification jewel, uh, and then you can, they can then see uh, the notification uh, that they've been sent a, a request to join a game. <clears throat> this notification shows up across all platforms. So if, I, if you've got a web version of your game, it will show up on desktop Facebook. Uh, if you've got an iOS version, it'll show up in their iOS uh, notifications tray as well. So it enables users to recruit one another regardless of what platform they're on. It's a pretty powerful mechanism uh, for cross-platform games. Whoops. Sorry about that. Skipped ahead. There we go. So sending a request is really straightforward. Uh, you use the FB Web Dialogues class. Earlier, I talked about the FB Dialogues class, which are our native dialogues. The FB Web Dialogues class pop up a, uh, a dialog box on top of your app. And you invoke the present request dialog modally uh, method uh, with that. So I'm going to cover some uh, permutations of requests. And then I'm going to show you how to do it inside a code in a second. The first concept is uh, frictionless requests. And so here, when I send a request to my friend, let's say I'm sending a request uh, to my friend Juan, uh, and I, wanna, I can check a box that says, any time in the future where I ha am in a game where I'm going to send a request to Juan, don't pop up this dialog box. I'm OK uh, in the future with that. 
And so here I can say, you know, check this box as a user and say, don't ask me again uh, before sending requests. So we want to support uh, frictionless requests as well. This is a really great feature for turn-based games. Uh, things like Words with Friends, for example, where I'm going to execute a turn and then I want to notify, I want to request my friend to complete their turn as well. And so uh, I don't want to have to see that dialog box every time if I'm frequently playing with that friend. The second thing is uh, request filtering, where you can, uh, uh, you can specify which friends uh, will show up inside uh, a particular dialog box. Uh, you, can you can restrict uh, the users that show up in the request dialog box to people who only qualify to certain criteria. In this example, and probably the most common example, is only, supporting, uh, only showing friends that have uh, devices on a certain platform. Uh, so if you only have an iOS and an Android version, you don't want to see people who only have a BlackBerry uh, or only have a Windows phone. You would then take the result of this query and send it to uh, your friend selector. Well, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Actually, let's go to the demo machine, I guess, and we'll do it right now. Okay. So. Let's take a look at the graph query uh, really quickly about uh, of, of what this looks like. So in this case, I want to get uh, a graph. Uh, I want to call uh, the graph API, graph.facebook.com, uh, for all of my friends. So slash me, slash friends. And I, I want to make sure I grab uh, inside that request uh, the fields for both name as well as the devices that a particular user uh, has. So I've already done that here. I've got an authentication token. This is using the Graph API Explorer, uh, which is one of the tools uh, on developers.facebook.com. And you can see here that I have executed this query, and I'll just expand that really quickly. Uh, so slash me, slash friends, uh, looking for uh, making sure that I grab the fields both name and devices. And you can see uh, here on the right-hand side the result of that query. So here's my friend John. Uh, that's his ID. He doesn't have any devices configured, uh, so that's a good thing to know. Uh, Hadi does have uh, devices configured. Not surprisingly, he has both an iPhone and an iPad. Uh, and if I continue to scroll, I can see that Ami, for example, has both uh, an iOS dev device as well as an Android device. So I can scroll through my entire list of thousands of friends here. Uh, but what the bottom line is is I grab all of my friends, and then I can see which devices they have, which devices they've used uh, to access Facebook. And then if I go back to my code here, uh, I can see I've executed that graph query uh, right here, so request for graph path. That's a, executed that same query, but now programmatically uh, from within my app. And I'm going to iterate uh, over the result and then pull out uh, the devices uh, object. Uh, pull out the devices key, I should say. And then when I look at that, I want to see uh, if uh, one of those devices is iOS. And if it is, I want to add that user uh, to my array, which I'm calling device filtered friends. So basically, I've executed this query. I've pulled back a list of all of my friends. I've iterated over my list of friends. I've looked inside of each one of them to see if they support a given device. And if they do, I've added it to my, uh, to my array. So now we've got that list of friends. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and call, uh, set up the FB frictionless uh, uh, device. But I'm going to call FB web dialogues, uh, present that dialog modally, uh, and then only show the friends of mine uh, that uh, have iOS. So let's go ahead and run that really quickly. This, by the way, is our uh, friend smash uh, canonical uh, game sample. Uh, Ali, who's like around here somewhere, uh, there he is right there, uh, is the uh, creator and uh, owner of Friend Smash. So if you have any questions uh, about Friend Smash and how to use this game, uh, definitely talk to Ali. And so here, uh, let's just jump back really quickly. Whoops, I didn't mean to log out, or I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> let's cancel real quick. Sorry about that, clicking. So I'm going to go ahead and challenge my friends. And so, for example, I've got a list of my friends up here whose devices are supported. I'm going to challenge my best friend, who's Horatio, uh, to a game. And I'm going to go ahead and send that request to Horatio. And I can look very quickly. I'll just show you inside of Chrome. I'll log in as Horatio because Horatio trusts me implicitly uh, with his uh, Facebook credentials. You can see I've got a request from Horatio here uh, to play Friend Smash. 
So inside uh, what I've done, uh, so what I've done inside my code is very, very simple. I've gone to the Graph API, I've pulled a list of my friends, I've then iterated over those friends to look for only those people who are on devices that are supported uh, by my game, in this case iOS. Once I've done that, I've created and populated the request dialog box with those friends, and then I can send a request uh, from that dialog box to those friends. They will then see that request inside their notification tray, whether it's on a web, uh, uh, whether it's on the web, uh, or whether it's on a mobile device. So that's the easiest, uh, simplest way to invite friends uh, to your game. So let's go back to the slides real quick. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing you can do because you're just doing a simple query on the Graph API is you can limit that query or adjust that query however you see fit. A common one uh, or a common limitation or a common adjustment would be to only query for people who are already playing your game. Uh, which case you want to do a challenge or uh, if you want to do uh, something of that nature where people actually know each other or are already players. Or you can limit the query to people who haven't played your game, uh, in which case that's sort of a great way to do an invitation and encouraging people to recruit new people to a game. So in either way, you know, you can, because it's just a very simple query, uh, you can use the Graph API to modify that query as you see fit. The other really important thing is supporting deep linking from requests. Uh, we talked about deep linking earlier in the, in the context uh, of newsfeed and timeline uh, in the nature of uh, I'm using an app, I share a story from my app, my friends see that story inside newsfeed. When they engage with it, they're either taken to the app store to download the app or they're taken directly to the app uh, to use the app. Deep linking is a great way in that context of completing that, so, of that, uh, completing that cycle uh, of encouraging people to use your app uh, and encouraging them to recruit new users. In this context, deep linking enables you to take your incoming request and then, put, and then parse that incoming request and put the user in a pertinent location inside your game. So for example, in Friend Smash, I could challenge Bear to a game of Friend Smash and the game could immediately start with me playing her when she engages with that notification rather than just starting randomly inside the game in a, in a different location, she can immediately interact with the request from me and play me in the game. So deep linking is a great way to make that request uh, more pertinent uh, to the user. <clears throat> the other thing we, re we recommend is building your own friend selector. So, so far, you've seen me pop up a dialog box uh, and it's a Facebook looking dialog box. And there's no way to get around that. You will definitely have to show that particular dialog box at some point. But rather than showing that dialog box with a whole bunch of friends, a whole entire list of friends, you could build your own custom friend selector uh, that, is, uh, that matches the user experience of your game. And the end result of that is when users are playing your game, they can see something like this, where they can invite their friends uh, to a game. It looks just like the game they're already playing. It isn't a jarring experience for them. You would then take the result of this dialog box and pre-populate uh, the request dialog box uh, that you saw earlier. And this, this is the kind of thing, because you're using your own, uh, your game's existing artwork, your game's existing user experience, this is the kind of thing that'll drive greater conversion of your apps. So let's see all of this in action. So this is uh, sort of our canonical example, which is uh, just an amazing uh, success story of Candy Crush. Uh, and let's see uh, all of this in action uh, in a movie here. So here I've got the user and the white player is playing uh, Candy Crush. Uh, and the white player is not doing a particularly great job. Uh, and in fact, they've kind of bombed out of Candy Crush uh, and they are out of lives uh, to play. And so the game asks them, do you want to retry? Uh, they say yes, but unfortunately, because they're out of life, so they either have to ask a friend to give them a life or they have to pay 99 cents. So they're going to ask a friend, which pops up the request dialog box. They're going to select their friend Guy here uh, to join them in the game. And they're going to say, Guy, will you give me a life so that I can continue playing the game at the same point? You can see on the black player here, Guy gets a notification uh, from uh, the other player. It's a Facebook notification. Takes them to the Facebook app where they then interact uh, with the notification itself. Because they're not already a player of Candy Crush, they're taken to the App Store, where they're given an opportunity to download Candy Crush. And you can see here that Candy Crush now finishes downloading. And the new user, uh, Guy, starts playing. The black player starts playing Candy Crush. 
They connect with Facebook. Uh, Candy Crush does an awesome job of presenting uh, why uh, someone should connect with Facebook uh, and showing them information about that. So the black player now connects with Facebook and wants to start playing the game. And because they're now playing the game and they've gone from deep linking into the game, they're presented with a dialogue box that tells them, you're in this game because someone asked you to give them a life. Are you willing to give them that life? And they say yes, and you can see here the white player gets a notification. They've got the life from the black player, and the white player can now uh, continue playing the game. So this is a great example of how on one player who's already an avid player of the game wants to continue playing, recruits a new player to the game. That new player then has an opportunity to download it and start using it and is now also a player of your game using the request dialog. OK. <clears throat> OK, so so far we've talked about requests, which enable you to do invitations uh, and which enable you to do challenges. Now let's talk about sharing. Sharing enables, you, enables a player to brag about what they've done inside your game. Uh, enables them to share uh, important moments uh, that they've accomplished inside their game. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the new native share dialog. So this is something we uh, announced two weeks ago uh, in New York. Uh, it's available uh, in the iOS SDK 3.5. Uh, and it requires that the latest Facebook app is installed on your device, so the Facebook app from uh, April 2013, uh, Facebook app uh, 6.0 or higher. And so the new uh, class is FB Dialogues. I'm going to call FB Dialogues, and I'm going to invoke uh, the present share dialog box uh, with a link. Uh, so uh, pretty straightforward. And the result here is I get uh, the share dialog. It shows up inside the Facebook app. So I'm taken from my game into the Facebook app, where I'm then presented with an opportunity to share uh, information from my game. And that'll show up uh, inside uh, of Facebook itself. Other users can then see that story. When they do see that story, uh, they can be enticed to then download the game themselves and start playing the game. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and see that uh, on the demo machine, please. OK, so here what I've got is uh, uh, one thing that's kind of important. So like I said, uh, the, the, the native share dialog box is new in Facebook uh, SDK 3.5, uh, the Facebook SDK for iOS uh, version 3.5 and higher. But for the moment, it's still in beta. It's probably going to be in beta for another few weeks. So in order to enable uh, this feature, I need to call this particular method uh, enable beta features. And uh, this is only temporary. Uh, you'll be able to remove it once we uh, take the native shared dialogues out of beta. Uh, but for now, uh, you have to include it. And if you do include it, you can only run this in debug mode. Uh, so you can't ship an app uh, with this feature installed yet. Uh, but in the next few weeks, you'll definitely be able to. OK. So the first thing I want to do is I want to prepare uh, the parameters. Uh, so here you can see I've got uh, you know, a, a link uh, to my game, uh, friend smash with the, with the player's ID, as well as a link to the picture inside the game. I'm going to uh, specify all the different parameters. So here's the initial uh, name of the, uh, of the dialog box itself, uh, as well as the caption. And then I'm going to invoke FB Dialogs present shared dialog uh, with parameters, supplying those parameters. So let's go ahead and just see that in action. Uh, whoops. There we go. I'll go back to the main menu. There we go. So I'm going to brag. As you can see, I've now fast app switched away from my game and into the Facebook mobile app that's installed on my device. And so here I can go ahead and say, I'm awesome. Thank you, Ali. And I can go ahead and post this uh, to my Facebook timeline. And then I switch back to my app. So there's something interesting there uh, that I want to point out. So this is a really, really, really simple form of sharing, incredibly easy form of sharing. With basically one line of code, I showed you some parameters that you can configure uh, that are totally optional. But with one line of code, I can invoke a share dialog. I can enable a person to customize the resulting story, and I can share it to Facebook. The problem with that dialog, though, if it's a problem at all, uh, and that depends on you, the, the, the thing about that dialog is I'm leaving the game. I was playing the game. I'm going to fast app switch to the Facebook app that's installed on the device. And then when I'm done with the dialog box, I'm going to come back to the game. 
For some developers, that's not a very tenable solution. You want to have something that's a lot more integrated where someone never leaves your app. That's a total preference uh, that you may have. If you want to do a more advanced form of sharing uh, without having to use those dialog boxes, uh, then you should investigate using the Facebook Open Graph and publishing stories. For example, uh, you know, Prashant challenges uh, someone to a, uh, to a contest, or uh, Prashant brags about something, or Prashant achieves something. You know, something has a verb and an object associated with it. So if you want to learn more about Open Graph, uh, you should watch Christine's session. We'll have the videos uh, for uh, this entire event online in the next couple of weeks. You should watch Christine's session and learn about Open Graph. If you're going to spend a lot of time and energy building a great user experience for your app, you don't want to build something where you take people away from that user experience. So it's something that's really worth investigating, looking into how you can publish stories using the Facebook Open Graph. OK, so let's jump back uh, to the slides real quick. So a couple of uh, just pieces of advice. I think the biggest one is share interesting moments from your game. Uh, you know, make sure that the stories that you share are going to result in a lot of engagement. Uh, don't share just kind of random things from your game because people may actually get turned off from your game as a result. Share things that people will be proud to see, have their friends see and know about them. Uh, things like achievements, things like I beat a certain person for the first time and he's an expert level player. Uh, those kind of things are very valuable things to share. Uh, they do result in a lot of engagement, which results in you and your app being discovered organically. The other thing that's really important is to support deep linking when sharing. You know, make sure that when you share a story that you're enabling people when they engage with it to either end up in the app store to download your game or end up in your game if they're already a player. Supporting deep linking is critical in terms of closing that loop, that social growth loop uh, that is uh, very important uh, to growing and getting people to discover your app. All right. Now let's talk about a really cool feature uh, that's very easy to use. Uh, it's the Graph API for scores. This enables you to build things like social leaderboards and scoreboards and so forth. It's a really simple API. It's only available for games. Uh, it enables you to publish an integer score for a player who's using your game. Uh, and we will generate really beautiful stories. You can see a number of these stories here automatically as a result. Now, the thing is that this Graph API, and the, these resulting stories, are only available on the desktop version of Facebook. But that doesn't mean that, the, that the, gra uh, the Graph API for scores isn't valuable for mobile. In fact, it's incredibly valuable for mobile. So let's first talk about uh, how you publish scores. It's uh, pretty straightforward. You're going to invoke a request on the Facebook Graph, and you're going to uh, post uh, something to uh, 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 the, the scores endpoint. Uh, so graph.facebook.com slash your app ID slash scores, or slash sort of the player's uh, ID slash scores. And with this, you can then create things like a social scoreboard. And so for example, you can pull all the scores that a certain player has access to see, which is basically the, the scores of all their friends. You can then iterate over that array of scores and then present a, a, a leaderboard of, uh, of people who are playing the game, of friends who are playing the game. So let's go ahead and see that on the demo machine. The first thing I want to show is uh, how we publish scores. Uh, so uh, first thing you have to do is make sure you have write permissions, because you are publishing uh, to a person's timeline. Again, this is when we ask for write permissions in context. You're about to publish a score from someone who's just finished playing your game. It's a great time to ask for permission to, to publish. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to get a list of all the scores uh, that a player already has. So we're going to get uh, graph.facebook.com, the player's Facebook ID, and then get their scores uh, from the Graph API. And what we want to look for is, is the current score uh, that they've just achieved greater than the score that's already stored in Facebook? And if it is, we'll then post uh, to the Graph API the new score. So let's go ahead and run that and see that in action very quickly. And you can see here's my social scoreboard. These are all the people that, I, that I'm friends with that have also played the game. And when they play the game, uh, you can see I, I, can, I have access to their scores as well. 
I don't have access to scores of people who haven't played the game. I only have access to scores of my friends. And I can present that scoreboard. Let's go back here real quick and look at how we get that information. So I'm going to uh, call uh, the Graph API, uh, and I'm going to get all the different scores, and then I can then iterate over them and present, them, present that in the leaderboard. And you can see that graph path is graph.facebook.com, the app ID of this particular app, uh, all the scores, and making sure that I get uh, both the username as well as the score for the user. OK, let's jump back to the slides again, and we'll One thing that's uh, very cool, like I talked about earlier, is, is implementing a tournament. A tournament is basically wiping out all the scores and then starting over and you're, and you're in whatever period makes sense. If you're running a daily tournament, deleting all the scores uh, af at the end of a given day and then enabling the, scores, uh, the score sheet and the leaderboard to accumulate again. A weekly tournament, you would do it every week and so forth. So creating tournaments is really easy as well, uh, using this very simple API where you publish one integer and you retrieve an array of integers uh, corresponding to your friend's scores. You can also define a set of achievements that a user can, uh, that a user can get. And once they've done that, we can automatically publish uh, stories to a person's timeline and to their newsfeed. In this case, we are publishing uh, uh, we're putting uh, open graph meta tags on uh, various uh, web pages. You can also alternatively use the object API, which again, Christine is talking about uh, next door. Which leads me to one last thing, which is uh, talking about open graph. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, open graph is an extraordinarily powerful mechanism uh, for building uh, and for publishing custom stories from within your app. Uh, stories that are very, very engaging, but also, perhaps most importantly, stories that don't take people away from the user experience of your application. And so I would highly encourage all of you uh, to learn about Open Graph uh, and to watch Christine's session uh, later on, grab her slides, talk to us later on in office hours, uh, and learn more about Open, open Graph as well. So, so far, we've talked about four things. Uh, we've talked about the social channels that enable you to build games that get discovered organically uh, by people and their friends. Requests enable you to uh, send invites uh, to various users, uh, as well as challenges, as, as, as well as gifts uh, to users as well. Sharing enables a, a player uh, to share uh, pertinent or important information and achievements that they've made inside their game uh, to their friends. Scores and achievements with one very simple API where you publish an integer uh, directly to Facebook. With one API, you can create scoreboards and create tournaments, and you can stoke that competitive nature that's inherent to all of us. And then lastly, I encourage you to learn a lot more about Open Graph, because Open Graph is probably going to be the best way for you to do deliver very engaging stories that drive greater discovery and greater growth of your game. So with that, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Prashant. So we're a little bit over time, but um, so if you need to move a little bit quickly, that'd be great. In here, we'll have Connor talking about mobile web. And next door will be Chris, um, Paul talking about how to promote your uh, app with mobile app install ads on Facebook. You can actually walk step by step through setting those up next door with Paul. Thank you.